It's Thanksgiving weekend in the U.S., which is a big checkpoint for the NHL. What individuals are standing out so far and how do the standings look? Plus, we've got a full weekend of action to preview coming up on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to the Locked On NHL podcast. I am Rachel Donner from Locked On Flyers, and I'm here with Gil Martin of Locked On Islanders. Thanks for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts, you'll get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil, how are you doing? How was your Thanksgiving day? Thanksgiving was very nice. Uh, You know, food, family, football, what could be so bad? So uh, (laughs) always enjoy Thanksgiving. How about yours? Uh, Yes, it was quiet, but delightful. Um, Of course, I did attend the pre-Thanksgiving matchup between our two teams. Did not go quite so well for the Flyers, but uh, it was a good game nonetheless. So excited to get back into hockey for this weekend. And uh, I know that around the NHL, it's a little bit less so than in the past, just the way the schedule has adjusted. But U.S. Thanksgiving has been a checkpoint to see like how teams are doing, how individuals are doing around the league, and that could give you an indication about how the season might turn out. And um, there's several individuals that I think are making an impression this early in the season, uh, but also we're getting to the point where it's starting to be a little bit more statistically significant, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not like five games anymore. We're, we're in the high teens for most teams, approaching 20. It's the quarter mark almost of the season. Hard to believe how fast the season is going by. But yeah, the, these accomplishments at this stage are starting to become a little more significant. Exactly. Uh, you got to talk about William Nylander in that conversation Um He's got 17 uh, games into the season, a point in every single one of those games, uh, 12 goals and 15 assists for 27 points. Uh, That is quite impressive. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you you can't ask to start the season too much better than that. You're you're getting into, you know, a situation where the consistency is what's remarkable. He's playing not just at a high level, but playing their game in and game out, always contributing to the success of his team. And look, Toronto's in a very tough dogfight in the Atlantic right now. And, uh, you know, they need those contributions in order to help them fight for a spot in the standings. Yeah, I think that is absolutely going to be huge. Obviously, we're talking about the standings uh, overall in the next segment. But um, I think that getting some key individual contributions are going to be important. Um, A name that I would never in a million years think that we would be bringing up right now is Jonathan Quick. Um, He has come up big for the New York Rangers. Again, a sentence that I did not think I would ever say. Uh, (laughs) But, you know, he has had to step up a little bit with Shesterkin uh, when he was hurt. He is 5-0-1 in uh, seven games with a 1.68 goals against average, 940 save percentage. Um, You have to think it's like 10 years ago or something. Yeah, even then. I mean, two shutouts already in six starts. I mean, he is just playing at a very high level. Will he keep up, you know, these numbers? Probably not. But, you know, when he's the backup to Igor Shesterkin and – you end up relying on him because of uh, 
injuries and then just how well he's playing. It, it, it's impressive. Where's the time machine? That's what I want to know. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, he's been a huge part of why the Rangers have been able to succeed thus far. I mean, th they're just finding ways to win and having a solid backup goaltender who's able to step up and has the experience as a number one goaltender uh, when, you know, when necessary. I think, you know, you look at the Rangers stats overall and they are very good you know, don't get me wrong, but they're not like blowing everybody away here. Like this team is beatable, but they're coming up with key contributions from guys like quick in order to be, you know, at or near the top of the league at whatever points uh, this season. And so Jonathan quick again, <laughs> um, and, and I wonder, you know, he's from Connecticut. I wonder if being close to home has been sort of an inspiration for him in some way. Could be. Could be. I think that is entirely possible. Um, a another guy who is expected to be good, but on a team that has had, you know, mixed results so far, uh, Sidney Crosby is having a, a really good season so far. Um, now, he hasn't didn't have any points in the last two games that he has played, but in 18 games so far, 22 points, 12 goals, 10 assists. And, you know, the conversation this season, I think when you look at the Crosby Ovechkin dynamic over the years, the conversation at the beginning was about Ovechkin. But Crosby, I think, is quietly or not so quietly in a lot of ways, uh, become sort of the better of the two in this season so far. Yeah, and I love the fact that he's a plus 11 through 18 games. I mean, that's just a really good pace. He's getting it done on the power play, and he he just seems to be defying age and time. And after a very slow start, the Penguins have come on a bit as of late, they've been inconsistent, but Sidney Crosby has not been. Yeah, I think that is uh, going to be a huge thing for the Penguins as they try to climb up the standings in the Metro division, which is really tough this year. And uh, it's good to see that from the grizzled old veteran who is younger than me, but we won't talk about <laughs> that um you know talking about some some younger players on the defensive side Quinn Hughes a defenseman is leading the NHL in points right now which is not a thing that happens very often and you know the fact that you look at the number three spot and there's Kale McCarr sitting there mm. as well like I really think the battle between these two guys uh, in terms of you know what the award season could look like at the end uh, as well. I, I think, you know, defensemen are really standing out a lot this year. They are. And uh, Quinn Hughes, I mean, the whole Hughes family, <clears throat> excuse me, really has been playing outstanding. And, you know, he is only the second defenseman in NHL history to lead the league in points at American Thanksgiving. And the only other player who did it is Bobby Orr, who I still regard as the greatest <laughs> player in NHL history. And he did it twice. So you're in rare company when uh, you've done something that only Bobby Orr has done. Uh, eight goals, 31 points in 20 games, a plus 15, uh, you know, leading his team in shots with 62, where, uh, you know, that's 10 more than the next highest player on a very, you know, solid offensive team the Canucks leading the league in goals scored right now Quinn Hughes is just getting it done all over the ice and he's been very very impressive and you know 13 of his 23 assists have come on the power play he is right now doing an outstanding job of quarterbacking the Vancouver power play and it, it really shows yeah, that's the thing about him is that, you know, they use him in a ton of situations. He's getting a ton of ice time, uh, a little 24 and a half minutes average ice time per game. And, you know, that's going to give you opportunities, but you have to take advantage of him. And he is doing that for sure. Um, can't leave this segment without 
uh, mentioning Connor Bedard leading all rookies with 10 goals so far this season. He is as advertised. Yeah, not not a bad start, right? I mean, he's on pace for what, about 40 goals if he keeps this up. So n- not bad, Connor, not bad. Uh, you know, it, it's good to see that a guy who was advertised as a generational talent is living up to that billing. Because let's face it, the the league needs superstars like that. And uh, it's scary to think how good he'll become once he matures physically and gets a little more comfortable playing in this league. If this is what he's like as a rookie, wow, look out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we promised a discussion on the standing so far at U.S. Thanksgiving, and we will be doing that coming up next. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to and make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to manage everything that's going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NHL today, and you'll even get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NHL. All right. So taking a look at the standings in the NHL as of U.S. Thanksgiving, I think, you know, the... I hate to be metro centric since we host metro shows, but it it's got to be the most interesting to me right now, uh, where the points percentage at the moment is matching the actual points. Uh, the rankings do not change when you make that adjustment. And I think there's two teams in the top half of the division so far that you might not have expected to be there. The first being the Washington Capitals in second place and the Philadelphia Flyers in fourth place. Yeah. And, you know, the impressive thing to me about the Flyers, you know, they just had that five game win streak snapped on Wednesday, but their goal differential is plus seven. And to me, that indicates that they may be a little bit more for real than some critics may believe. I'm not saying they necessarily make the playoffs, but I think they'll be in the hunt the whole way this year. I don't know about that, but I think (laughs) that, um, yeah, they're doing a lot more things right than they did last season. They are scoring more and they have changed strategies a little bit on that front, whereas they'd been taking more shots from distance in the past and are really focusing a lot on the net front presence right now. And that's leading to some tip in goals that maybe they haven't seen since Wayne Simmons was there with the team. Um, And it has helped them offensively so far. And, you know, with the Capitals, they're managing to be successful uh, without Ovechkin being a phenomenon so far, which I think is a huge deal. Yeah, it it really is. Ovechkin off to a very slow start, disappointing start. They're getting more depth scoring than they have before. Little thing about the Caps, though, 11 of their first 16 games this year have been at home. So they're 3-1-1 one, and one on the road, but they have a lot of road games coming up uh, to, to, to make up for the fact that it's been a home-heavy schedule early. But they are on a five-game winning streak and looking very impressive right now. Yeah, I would say, you know, the Columbus Blue Jackets being as bad as they are right now is is the biggest surprise. The Devils, I think, will get there, you know, with the Hughes injury. I think that was a little bump in the road, but I, I do see a better uh, road ahead for them. In the Atlantic Conference, uh, the Boston Bruins continue to be pretty dominant here, uh, 7-1-2 and two in their last 10. and 
you know, I, I just, I don't think it's a fluke. I think they are g- that good a team. They are. And, you know, they, they're getting it done both in Boston and on the road. They have a plus 25 goal differential. Their defense, their, their goaltending is probably the best duo right now in the league with Olmark and Swayman getting the job done. I mean, those, those two guys push each other well. <laughs> they have a friendly competition and there is no drop off between the starter and the backup. And it probably depends on who's riding the hot hand as to who you would call the starter right now. Yeah. And I would say for me, the surprises in this division, the Panthers playing as well as they are with all the injuries that they've had. And then maybe the Sabres not really living up to the higher expectations this year. Yeah, I'm surprised the Sabres are uh, under NHL 500 right now. Uh, A a definitely disappointing start. It's funny with young and coming teams, you know, sometimes they have that little bump in the road. uh, The unexpected half a step back while they're trying to make progress and take a, a couple of steps forward. The question is, you know, here we are at American Thanksgiving. Do you think the Sabres can snap out of this and get on a hot streak and get back into the thick of a very competitive Atlantic division. I mean, I certainly think they have the talent to do it. It's can they put it together is the question. Um, And, you know, I think another big question is what the Leafs are going to do because I think they've, you know, they've played well, but they haven't dominated in a way that I think they would have liked to. So I will be very curious to see how they, um, match up and and continue to battle in this Atlantic division. Uh, moving over to the Western Conference, you know, I think we all knew that the Dallas Stars were good, but the fact that they've, you know, it's played out for them and they've proven it. I think, you know, a team that's good on paper, sometimes you never know how it's going to turn out. And so far, so good with them. Yeah, they they look very, very strong, and they're seven one and one on the road, which is very, very impressive. First place, two points ahead of Colorado, and then quietly, Winnipeg just two points out of first place, winning four in a row and seven two and one in their last ten. You know, the the Jets don't get a lot of attention, but quietly they are being a, a very dangerous team right now. Yeah, I think in the offseason, there was a giant question mark with them um, in terms of who is this team. You know, they made some changes, let some guys go. But I think that uh, they've just been sort of doing the work and taking advantage of opportunities. And yeah, can they sustain this, I think, is going to be the question for the next couple of months with them. And then I guess the other surprise is how Minnesota is just absolutely slumping right now. Five straight losses for the Wild. They are uh, in seventh place in the division. Goal differential of minus 16. That's a team that just looks lost right now. Yeah, they are lost in the woods. (laughs) Yeah. But I I just, they don't know who they are. They don't know what to do as a team. Um, And it is very concerning. Because uh, if they don't turn it around, they they could be shut out of the playoffs entirely, which is um, a very different place than I would have thought they would have been in at this point in the season. No doubt, and I, I think there is still a little time for them to turn things around. But this is they've got to figure out what kind of a team they want to be, and then you know execute that strategy. Because right now, like we said, they they are just a team without an identity. Exactly. Uh, One of the teams we've already talked about a little bit on the show is the Vancouver Canucks. And I think they are the big surprise of the Pacific division. I don't think anybody is surprised. The Vegas Golden Knights are at the top of that division. Um, But, you know, the Canucks are there in second place point percentage. It's the Kings. I get that. But um, the Kings, you would have expected to be there as well. But the fact that the Canucks are in the thick of a battle for the division um, is a big surprise, but uh, honestly good for them. I think, you know, there's been a lot of negative talk about this team 
for a very long time and to see them like put it all together and find scoring and find success from names and, and faces that you might not have thought of. Yeah, it's it's been very, very uh you know, a, a very pleasant surprise for the Canucks. They they lead the league in goals. They have the best goal differential at plus 29. And it is very hard to beat them in Vancouver. 7-1-1 one, and one in their first nine home games. They've played nine home and 11 road. And they're still just looking very, very strong. Can they sustain it? Uh, we'll see. But right now, they are off to a very, very solid start. And... You know, uh, unfortunately, Anaheim, which got off to a strong start, they've now lost four in a row. They're fading a little bit. Yeah, I think you might have expected yeah. that at some point with them. It just wasn't sustainable. Um, but I, I think looking at the Battle of Alberta here uh, with these teams lower in the division. Now, the Flames, I feel like, are getting the ship right a little bit. They've, they've found some recent success, and I do think they're headed – in the right direction um and they're not like completely far behind but the oilers man i feel like the oilers and the wild just need to play each other for a while to figure <laughs> out who they are probably straighten out one of them at least right i mean yeah yeah the oilers you know y- you usually get that little brief boost when you change coaches i mean that's one of the reasons teams do it now they've lost three in a row uh, falling back in the standings again. The the fact that San Jose is just four points behind Edmonton speaks volumes about how much Edmonton is struggling this year. Yeah, it's just brutal. And there doesn't seem to be a way out of it at the moment. But uh, who knows? We've got some games ahead this weekend that maybe – some teams that are lower can turn it around and the teams up top can rack up more points. We will talk about those games coming up next. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer deals on last minute tickets and with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for all the fun you'll have. My favorite part of the Game Time app, it's great for getting notified about those last minute tickets and flash deals. They've got deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even up to an hour after it starts. It is the place to find your last minute seat. Also, the tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account. And use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, redeem with the code locked on NHL for $20 off. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel over on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for your 24-7 coverage. Uh, looking at the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows, including this one, covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe. Big weekend of action, including this Black Friday today, uh, starting off with a couple of afternoon games, Detroit at Boston. I love this matchup. Uh, You know, great to see. Uh, It's a division rivalry. It's an original six rivalry. And I think we'll get an idea of how far the Red Wings have really come this year by how they play in Boston. They don't have to necessarily win the game, but if they can go toe-to-toe with the Bruins, I I think that'll say that they are for real. Yeah, I think so. I think Detroit is in a prove-it kind of moment right here uh, in, in their divisional race. Uh, Rangers at Flyers in a traditional Black Friday matchup. Uh, We'll see how that one turns out. And then uh, a little bit later, Toronto is at Chicago. Nylander, of course, wanting to keep that streak up. And uh, Chicago beat them the last time around. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, and then you have Bedard and Nylander. uh, That alone is worth the price of admission. 
Yeah, love to see that. Uh, Edmonton that we were just talking about has a chance to redeem themselves at Washington, which should be tough for them. Yeah, the Capitals doing a, a very good job at home and, and you know, Edmonton searching for who they are and, and what they want to be. Very discouraging start for the Oilers. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo and Minnesota, again, we talked about them last segment. They are both part of the TNT doubleheader in the U.S. Uh, Buffalo facing Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Minnesota is at home against the top flight Colorado Avalanche. Uh, This is going to (laughs) be a tough set of games for the underdogs. Yeah, no question. I mean, the Wild hosting the Avalanche, uh, you know, yes, they're on national TV. Maybe that inspires them a little, but Colorado is just such a talented team. And, you know, maybe it's almost scary that the Avalanche are not getting as much attention because of some of the surprise teams in their division. Yeah, I think so. I think that is a a big part of it. Um, We talked about the Winnipeg Jets. They are at Florida which I think is going to be one of the more interesting games of the day, given that Florida has been sort of overperforming in a lot of ways, um, in in a good way. Uh, They are a very good team, but to see how they match up against Winnipeg, um, who are also somewhat overperforming to expectation, um, I, I think this is the one I want to watch the most, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's not two high-profile teams, but it's two very solid teams who are pleasant surprises. And, uh, you know, if if I'm from Winnipeg, I'd rather go to Florida in February, but I'll take the road trip now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a bunch of games on Saturday as well. Very excited for the afternoon matchup of Boston at New York. Both of these teams playing in a back-to-back situation of having afternoon games two days in a row. Afternoon games sometimes don't sit right with NHL players because yeah. of their routine. Uh, but both teams are going to have to step it up at Madison Square Garden on this one. Marquee matchup, two great teams. Uh, you you guarantee these are two teams with both of them have two great goaltenders. Uh, I would look for a low scoring game, but this this should be a great matchup. Yeah, the other big one I'm intrigued by is Calgary at Colorado. We already talked about the Avalanche and the fact that Calgary is turning it around. A win against Colorado would be huge for them. Oh, absolutely, and uh, you know, tough road trip to Denver. But, uh, you know, the Flames are starting to play better, and uh, it's kind of a crucial junction in the season for them. They need to get straightened out sooner rather than later, and this is a great opportunity to do that if they can pull off the upset. Yeah, and then we've got five games on Sunday. I think that um, there are some lopsided matchups here, but again, with the Wild and Edmonton playing on these days, the Wild playing Detroit, Edmonton playing Anaheim at home. You have to think, like, if you're going to win any game, Edmonton, it's going to be this one. Yeah, I mean, Edmonton's got to get back on track. And from Anaheim's standpoint, you know, they've been losing a little bit lately, coming back down to earth. But if they can beat Edmonton, maybe they can get back on track a little bit at least. So both teams kind of need this game. Yeah, I think so. And then the big rivalry on Sunday is St. Louis at Chicago. St. Louis has been having a pretty solid season. I wouldn't say spectacular, but solid so far. And, uh, you know, going into Chicago, big rivalry, uh, of course, with the hype over Bedard. Um, I think, you know, this is a a game that Chicago is going to want to win at home, but St. Louis has just got to get it done. Yeah, I mean, the Blues have sort of been quietly efficient for most of the yeah. season. Like you said, not spectacular, but but they're there in the thick of this race. And, uh, you know, they if they want to keep being in that position or even get better, they can't afford to lose a game in Chicago. I love this rivalry. There's a great history to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that will do it for today's show and for Locked On NHL for the week. Thanks so much for listening. 
And uh, Gil, you will be back on Monday with local hosts from around the league catching up on all the big stories. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your holiday weekend if you're in the U.S. Everyone.